All right. Let's participate in the obligatory um, commentary. From the Royal Family's uh, official YouTube channel, which is where we all go to get our, um, our, our death of the monarchy, hot news and information. So suppose we could all just sort of have a laugh at what the Brits look like, I guess. This guy looks great. What a nicely manicured beard. We have sort of the poofy hat man. So, does anyone in chat know the guys in the red coats? Apart from being pedophiles, what are they? What what rank? Because they just look like old dudes. Master pedos. Gotcha. Royal guards. They're not royal guards. Those guys were like eighty. They might be lords or something. Or like, um, because the House of Lords? Like, in England, they literally have lords. Like, that's just a thing. Like, you can just show up here and be like, Oh, yes, I'm a Lord Duke. Lord Duke, Dukey Lord. And then, like, yeah. They have knighted people. Yeah. King's Guard. No, 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 I meant the old lads, not the ones with the big poofy hats. I know about these guys. Lamau. King's Guard called the Queen's Guard up until a week ago. What are these little blue lights in the cars? What is this? We established how he can become an official lord by buying a square foot of him in Scotland. Feels like a spike move from the Scottish I respect it. Those are police lights? They're just little bots. Look at these little European cars. Video's too loud? Okay, gotcha. There. Look at these tiny little European cars. I like, it's so weird because if you look in like historical drawings or even old photos, when I see people in more ornamental regimen, they look fine. It's like, oh yeah, it's like the late 19th century and these guys have their fancy boy coats on and they look great, you know? But now in the modern day, it looks so weird and stupid. Like, it's, it's, it's as though there's some kind of fundamental incompatibility between um, royal regalia and like 4K cameras, you know? Yeah, it just... Vosh, I was a Navy cadet as a teen, and that was my uniform, lol. Even with the hat? Tempest. Yes? Oh. All right. Especially the hat. All right. What, you don't want the hat? I don't want the stupid little chin strap. The hat on its own would be fine. This just makes it look like they're wearing stupid little upturned bucket hats. I'm also not very fond of this, like, anime schoolgirl, you know, because they're called sailor uniforms, right? Um, like, like, collar around to, to back cape? I, I, I don't like that. Maybe if it was white instead of blue? I don't know why it's blue when the rest of it is black. Vosh, it's tradition. I know it's tradition. These stupid fucking hats are tradition. I'm criticizing it. They're carrying spears, for fuck's sake. These fucking mop heads.
Oh. 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 It just, does this not look like terminally lame to the rest of you? Like, how can any Brit look at this and go like, ah, oh, yes. Like, all this is taking place while hospitals have been closed. Um, you know? Like, as this is happening, there are people who are, like, calling up to try to rebook cancer appointments. Like, and, 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 and meanwhile, you know, Lord Foppington and, and the, the, the 58th uh, Mophead Brigade are out here doing a little dance. Um, I don't know. And of course, because she's also the head of the Church of England, you know, this is like a, a fully religious ceremony. Would you feel better if they were all holding .50 BMG rifles? Um, honestly, if you're going to have like a military regalia with a bunch of soldiers, I think I would, yeah, I think I would actually prefer them all carrying modern weapons to them ca carrying spears. There's, there's something just sort of weird and off-putting about an adherence to tradition, which is having them use, like, 400-year-old weapons. I don't know. Give them all rail guns, yeah. Which do you prefer aesthetically, a royal guard or the Swiss guards of the Vatican? Oh! Are you fucking kidding me? Is that even a question? As long as we're talking about royal regalia, dude, the Swiss Guard of the Vatican are like the gigachads of the royal regalia right here, okay? Because they fully lean into it, all right? They don't go for this, like, 19th century, like, um, decent, respectable military regalia dressed up a bit for the monarchy. They look like court jesters, and they lean into it. They are wearing goddamn, like, 16th century conquistador hats with red feathers that each would have, like, they, they, they would have had to, like, colonize an entire Central American island to get the birds to pluck the feathers from, back when they, they were first designed, I'm sure. And, like, the dyes to make this uniform would have cost, like, the average wage of, like, 20 years of one peasant, you know. Um, and they have fucking halberds. Absolutely. I respect these guys, okay? Also, a critical distinction. The Swiss Guard protect the Vatican, and the Vatican is not really a country, you know? The Vatican is essentially just, like, a religious institution that has a national identity, um, whereas the Queen, like, this is all happening in a, in a country, in a democracy, ostensibly. The Vatican does not purport to be a democracy, nor does it have a real population. Like, look at this guy. Yeah, I think they carry, they carry what, like, MP5s or something? The Swiss Guard? Like, look at this fucking dude. Like, just imagine, like, imagine, like, um, challenging papal authority while on the grounds of the Vatican, and this stone-jawed motherfucker, who I assume is seven feet tall, just whips out an MP5 and reduces your body to a sort of aerosolized paste. Um, <laughs> it's, Jesus Christ. Are they gonna fire that directly forward? Is this like a, is this like a a, a martyrdom? Just this guy right here. This guy right here. It's not a cannon lull. Yeah, but it kind of looks like one, doesn't it? What is it? That's the coffin. They they have wheeled her in the um, the imperial royal coffin tank to protect it from terrorist attacks and um, you know uh, 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 the, the Asiatic hordes. Um, they have armored her in this um, even the wheels for her fucking coffin carriage look like they're straight out of Victorian England, don't they? Like, does this not look like the, the, the wheeling you'd see on, a, on like, a, 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 a carriage being pulled by a horse? A 
cough into rival Metal Gear. Swiss guards are... Oh, okay, okay. That's the... Okay, so they're loading the coffin onto the... Okay. There we go. There we go. Notice that they're, um... They're stealing the, um... The color profile of the Swiss guard. Their superiors. Always the pretenders, those British. They, um... They defy papal authority hundreds of years ago, but they still can't help but crib their aesthetic. Imagine dropping this. One one of these guys is is, is Scottish. Just just he just takes the fall right there. Do the funny. Do the funny. Now these are actually the royal coffin carriers. They spend their entire life doing um, curls so that they're ready to carry your coffin. Like they've spent like from eight years old, they were stolen by the crown and put on a daily curling regimen so that they would not drop the coffin in this pivotal moment. What are we doing? Something's happening. You joke, but this is genuinely the Coffin Bearer team. No, I'm not jo- I'm, well, I am joking, but like, of course they're the Coffin Bearer team. Like, this is- that, you know, again, it's- it's England. Like, they're- they probably come from like an order of royal knights that descend from- from fucking King Arthur or some shit, you know? Like, some insane historical... I've said this before, but there's only one military ceremony that I really respect. And it's the, um, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington Cemetery in the United States. It is the most ceremonial thing we do in the United States. And it's done to, um, and it's done to honor the soldiers whose bodies we never recovered. Not, like, some foppish fucking royal dipshit or whatever. Not some, like, incestuous, um, colonizer piece of shit. Well, I guess a lot of those soldiers would have been colonizers, but, you know, whatever. Hell yeah, dude, the Crab March. We lower and raise the flag in ceremonial fashion every day. Okay, that doesn't compare to this. I said the most ceremonial thing we do. The changing of the guard for the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, to my knowledge, that in terms of like what we make a spectacle of, that's the most, like, ceremonial thing that I can think of in the U.S., and it's also something that I'm, like, okay towards, you know? I think every country has their, um, flag codes. Fun fact, that carriage weighs two tons. Um, yeah, it's probably, like, weighed down with the cremated ashes of all the house servants that Queen Elizabeth had over a lifetime or something. Kind of the way that they would, um... They would uh, bury pharaohs with all their like, um, all their like royal consorts and all their servants and everything, you know. I asked the corgis, tossed them in the fire. They killed all of her servants when she died. Charles came in and he was like, "Nope, nope, nope." Oh, off, off to the, the the grill with you, and then they all uh, got torched. Uh, this is the, um, those that have, like, the jewels of India or whatever, right? That's the shit that's worth, like, eight trillion billion dollars or whatever. Doesn't that, doesn't that crown go to Charles now? Jesus Christ. Multiple Brit bongers dying of fucking bagpipe exposure. He'll design its own. Wait, are they seriously burying the like one billion dollar crown? No? Okay, that's what I thought. There's no fucking way. That shit's like a national. Yeah. What an incredible fuck you that would be if they were like, you know, and to, and to commemorate Elizabeth II, no one else is fit to wear her crown, and they just fucking 
they just fire it into the ocean. Just just annihilate it or some shit. <laughs> they 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 take a boat off the coast of India and they just do a little thing there. Oh, the Star of India is is the scepter. It's the scepter. Gotcha. What are your opinion on the old German spiked helmets? The the pumpernickel whatevers? I always thought they looked stupid. Yeah, I don't know the Pickelhaub. I guess if you decorate it with enough gold, it can look, I don't know, gold, but it still looks stupid. It looks like a butt plug. Man, the security at this event had to have been fucking insane. There's so many people happy the Queen is dead. You think this might lead to the monarchy having less legitimacy because Charles is a wanker? Yeah, probably. Um, Elizabeth II, like, for a monarch, I think, like, basically everyone was fine with Elizabeth II because she never fucking did anything. Like, she just sat there and was old, you know? Um, but Charles is more openly contemptible, so it's probably going to lead to more people turning. Beep, 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 beep. Ooh, Artemy. Ooh. Artemy. Artemy. The biggest jewel in the crowns from South Africa. South Africa, gotcha. There we go. There you go. The government is passing a bill making it illegal for nurses to strike. Hell yeah. Hey, Rat Brave, this is dope as shit. When someone politics bad. This is so true. I do this literally every stream. Hell yeah, absolutely. All right, move it along. The golden orb is said to contain a piece of the cross from the crucifixion. Um, yeah, there, there are like. I think all around the world, there are enough splinters of the true cross to make up like 58 true crosses, aren't there? <laughs> right? Um, yeah, that's one of those. Um, I mean, how do you disprove that, right? There, to, to be fair, though, if there, were any, if there was any place that actually would be able to like legitimately acquire a shard of the cross, like this would probably be one of them, right? They're 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 disembarking their stupid bull hats. Yes! Oh, they look so much better now. That stupid strap.
Dead. 7.6 magnitude earthquake in Mexico. Call me what's the name. I'm kidding. I'll, I'll look soon. Ah, dude! From the side, it looks like a Guy Fieri. Like, um... Like the Flames Hawaiian t-shirt. Like they put it on the side to make it go faster. See? You see what I mean? It's like, boom, you know? Like, uh, yeah, Hot Wheels. Gotta go fast. We have different styles of looking down here. There are so many different ways you can look down. Do the funny. <laughs> Do the funny. They all look like they're on the verge of tears. I mean, if they're invested enough in the monarchy to be dressed up like this, they probably are legitimately pretty down. I do like the whole, like, having a bunch of men act as sort of human pack wolves to carry the carriage, you know? Like, they're literally, they are appear like huskies uh, at attached to the rope, you know? To, to haul the cart around. God, I'm so fucking glad that when U.S. presidents die, it's just like a big funeral, you know? Like, like a U.S. a former president is just a citizen. Um, which was the former president who died in poverty, and then after that, presidents were given a wage after retirement because it was decided that it was kind of a national embarrassment. Truman. That's wild. Harry S. Truman Funeral Memorial Service. Wasn't Mao's funeral massive? Yeah, but Mao was worshipped as a, like a god, kind of. That people people will get people will get mad at me about that, but like that's that's fucking true, okay? Like Ma the 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 Mao by by Mao's government, Mao was not treated as just like a cool guy. <laughs> he there it was a bit beyond that. When you when you have like a framed portrait that you have to fucking salute in class every day. Holy shit, dude, this is so long ago. Oh my god. Here's Truman's funeral service. We have the cannons. We got some old dudes. We have the US flag. We have the US flag instead of your fucking personal royal flag, you stupid royalist fucks. And he's laid to state. You got some actual- Oh, shit, dude! These guys also have the Navy uniform, but they don't have the stupid fucking hat bucket strap. Hell yeah. America number one. What was the last presidential funeral? Was it Reagan? What was the last one? Um... H- Oh, HW, HW, yeah. Um... H- President George H.W. Bush funeral. I just kind of want to see for, like, comparison. Here, funeral of former President George H.W. Bush. Oh, yeah, dude, this wasn't long ago at all. I completely- yeah, I forgot. Nah, I'm not gonna salute him, not even as a joke. This is a good-ass building. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Chad, American serviceman. 
walking like machines even while carrying the funeral. Look at them. They're, they're like they're like a cog. They're rotating at exactly 18.5 degrees with every turn. They have the strap. Do they have the strap? I didn't see the strap. Who the fuck is that guy? I hate that guy. Literally no difference. Oh no, there's a huge difference. Um, the all of the all of the ceremony that you see here is civilian and military. A president is a commander in chief, after all. This is royal and religious. Massive difference. Um, enormous difference. Like this is a statesman's funeral right here. This is the kind of thing you would expect for a former. Um, yeah, like there's no weird. Yeah, exactly. There's no like weird esoteric like mystical bullshit or whatever. Um, he's, the coffin's taken out of a car, he's saluted as the former commander-in-chief, and then he's laid in state as the former president, you know? It makes sense. Um, pretty modest affair in comparison to this shit. Every bond that he may rest ah, we got the religious element. With all your he was, after all, a Christian. God damn, that's pretty. Do you like the American flag aesthetically, I mean? Um, it's okay. There are worse flags. Um, there are ones that I like a lot better. Nothing compares to Albania. It's exactly the same. This is, this is just like an amped up version of a regular funeral here in the States. Usually, um, in the States, funerals are officiated by, um, by priests. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, a little bit more, um, dressed up for a for a president, but it's the same shit. Wait, I don't know if people are joking. You do actually understand the difference, right? There's a huge difference between a royal funeral and the funeral of a statesman. The religious elements present here are common to every American funeral for a Christian. Like, the priests here are reading his last rites. Like, of course, he was a Christian. Um, but the institution of his death itself is not like a religious ceremony. So much here is rooted in like centuries of tradition in a way that's unique to the, the, the royal family, the monarchy. Um, this is just an amped up version of traditional funereal rites for like pr American Christians. Um, and the only like additional stuff that you wouldn't see elsewhere is like, I guess the degree of like pomp, but it's not really like, a categorical difference. It's just sort of an amping up of existing. Oh, never mind. Yeah, we didn't have soldiers pulling the hearse like dogs. Okay, I'll say that much. We we just drove a car with the um with the coffin in it. We didn't have forty lads in sailor uniforms drag it with their fucking torso belts across the across the streets never mind i'm not getting into i how much gay sex do you think those hoes have had millions i saw flower all right I don't think the funny's gonna happen. I think I would have heard of it. Oh yeah. Dude. Oh yeah, dude. Do the Warhammer. Choir is beautiful, though. Yeah, I'm not critiquing their form. This feels like a Bloodborne. Bo well, Bloodborne was set in London. Ridiculously cool building, though. Yeah, of course. What building is this again? Westminster Abbey. Okay, gotcha. How are you so smart? I'm not at all. I'm a fucking idiot.
I like that they have the um, gift note still in there from the florist they bought all these flowers from. You know? Like, um, price and, like, if you want more flowers, come down to, like, Abby's florist. Are we about to enter the phase two queen boss fight? Yeah, they're going to sacrifice the choir to her in a blood ritual. And she's going to emerge from the coffin. Build a saddle of leather and bone and inflict revenge on an uncaring world. Slowest walk in the fucking universe. This is, I assume this is drone operated, right? This camera shot. Imagine turning off the drone when it's directly above. Ima imagine like, imagine being the drone operator, knowing that there's, there's a guy with a gun pointed at your head as you slowly lower it, you know. There's there's like 50 guys with like muskets pointed directly at you like lower the drone now, Johnny. Nice and easy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a ceiling mounted camera. Yeah, but that's less funny than my version. It's a Victorian orphan on a string. Ceremony dictates the royal funereal footage. Uh the 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 bird's eye shot be taken from a Victorian orphan on a string. They somewhere in um, uh, uh, Westminster Abbey, they maintain a Victorian era town, like in a basement somewhere, so they can procure from it orphans when needed for ceremonial purposes. <laughs> Look at their little ah, oh, dude. It's like you're. It's like um, it's like you're 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 playing like fucking Rimworld or something. One of those like top down games or something. Look at their goofy little walk cycle. <laughs> yeah, lemmings. In grief and also in, <clears throat> in profound thanksgiving. Cleared throat in the first second of the speech. Loser. L. She's going to hell now. We come to this house of God. To a place of prayer. To a church where remembrance and hope are sacred duties. Here. God, man, it is quite an impressive building, though. Whew. Whew, whew. I would, I would say the the one big problem with this building, though, is they need to reject uh, modernity and embrace tradition. Get rid of these spotlights, okay? We need candles. There need to be like six monks in Westminster Abbey whose only job is like lighting and maintaining all the candles the way it used to be. You know. Um, cutting all the wicks and, like, replacing them and cleaning up the drip and everything. That's what we need. Where Queen Elizabeth was married and crowned, we gather from across the nation, from the Commonwealth, and from the nations of the world, to mourn our loss, to remember her long life well, there are, of there selfless are some service, and ensure confidence to commit her to the mercy of God our maker and redeemer. With gratitude, we remember the her unswerving paper. commitment to it's our over. High Going to hell over so many years as Queen and Head of the Commonwealth. With admiration, we recall her lifelong sense of duty and dedication to her people. With thanksgiving, we praise God for her constant example of Christian faith and devotion. With affection, we recall her love for her family and her commitment to the causes she held dear. What? Now, in silence, let us in our hearts and minds recall our many reasons for thanksgiving. Pray for all members of her family and commend Queen Elizabeth to the care and keeping of Almighty God.
O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, in whom whosoever believeth shall live, though he... Imagine pretending to be Christian when you're literally the head of the Church of England. You literally caused the papal split. You literally broke the fucking flock in half. How dare you? What the fuck? Think like the Vatican, like the Pope is watching this with his hands on his hips, just being like... Was Martin Luther? No, Martin Luther kicked off the Reformation, but it was King Henry VIII because he wanted to divorce his wives, um, who uh, uh, said like, yeah, actually, I'm actually the head of the church now. It's, my, it's me, actually. Um, yeah. Die. Do you think that to priests right now they're like burying God or something? To the to the priests here, if they're authentic followers of their belief and truly believe it, to them this would be like burying the Pope. Um, to them, the Queen was a, the divinely ordained royal appointee of the Church of England and thus God. So it, it's it's a divine right thing. So like putting laying to rest the monarch to them should be like putting down, like, like setting to rest the Pope. And whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall not die eternally. Who has taught us by his holy apostle St. Paul not to be sorry as men without hope for them that sleep She's in She's called him. protector of the faith, yeah. We meekly beseech thee, O Father, to raise us from the death of sin unto the life of righteousness that when we shall depart this life, we may rest in- I think maybe the only more extreme royal cult is the emperor of Japan. Right-wing Japanese consider him a living god. Yeah, well, that's the distinction, right? They don't, like, the, the cr Christians don't see the queen or the pope as living gods, only as, like, appointees. Like, like, like Muhammad, right? Like, um, like, um, pr like prophets, or, or like the, the, the big guy that the, that the god, like, chooses to, to lead the flock. Um, you know, like the the Muslims thought of Jesus Christ as a prophet as well, just not God himself, you know, and that's, I mean, people, you know, people kill each other over this shit. Him, as our hope is, this our sister doth, and that at the general resurrection in the last day, we may be found acceptable in thy sight, and receive that blessing which thy well-beloved son shall then pronounce I'll to all that speed love if I wanted two times thee. speed saying also you couldn't even listen to it at two times speed i'm gonna skip through it i'm not two times anything come ye blessed children. <laughs> okay we'll, we'll skip through it children of my father And this mortal. Oh, we just took a singing break. It's like um, it's like a Broadway show to keep things interesting. They they like they 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 sort of um alternate between choir sections and the um and the the speeches. Shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying. How big are those candles? These are big candles. Death Has Vosh never been to a funeral? Is swallowed up um, not in a long time, actually. In victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. I like the hat, yeah. And the strength of sin. I like this outfit a lot, actually, because this is unambiguously a villain's outfit, you know, like a Cruella de Vil kind of drip. I, I respect this a lot, actually, like sh showing up, showing up at the um, at the Queen's funeral while, while dressed like some kind of uh, like avant garde um, torture mistress. It's good. Is the law. But thanks be to God. Who is she? I have which no idea. giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, 
my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. She could definitely, like, Unmovable. deliver this a bit better, I think. Always abound. Ah, yep. We have Andrew's victims. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but I'm such a fucking me. retard, dude. Oh my fucking god. My if brain ye is... had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, ye know him, and have seen him. It was just, uh, yeah, it's... Now, Liz Truss is so fucking boring that I don't even want to watch her speech for, like, looking for jokes or whatever. Like, she's so boring, there's not even going to be any comedic material to pull from there. Why is Liz Truss there? Well, current, like, head of state, right? The pattern for, head of government. for many leaders is to be exalted in life and forgotten after death. The pattern for all who serve God, famous or obscure, respect disciples that he came not find to Biden. be served. Oh yeah, five points to whoever can find Biden in the audience, by the way. Served, but are still rare at the funeral. During COVID lockdown ended with, we bills will Do you think they have, like, a security detail around Biden because they know he's Catholic and that at any moment he could, like, Molotov the, um, the, uh, coffin, you know? Like, like, Biden's, they had to put him, like, way in the back because they know that if he was near the front, he'd be, like, rocking back and forth, like, with his hand in his coat, like, waiting, you know? He's Irish. Yeah, fucking Irish Catholic, yeah. I don't, I don't watch the BBC. I'm Irish, you know? Yeah, he's gonna... He's here to make sure she's dead, yeah. He's not- he's not willing to believe it until he sees the coffin lowered into the ground. ...in her words. Let us pray for all those whose hearts are heavy. Through Jesus Christ, I beseech thee to bless- good. Nice, nice framing, cameraman, dipshit, fucking idiot. Imagine, imagine being this kid and like trying to show your friends, like, look, I was at the royal wedding, <laughs> your funeral, sorry. I was at the royal funeral, see? Look, I, wait, I'm, I'm coming up at the one hour, 19 minute spot. Look, look. <laughs> yeah, some Mike Wazowski shit. <laughs> yeah, and all the fucking classmates call him Lamp Boy for the, for the rest of the semester. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be God done, damn it. on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Oh shit, that's like the most common prayer, isn't it? Um... I've heard that one a bunch of times. Uh, I think I think any prayer will sound pretty creepy when it's being said by like five trillion dudes inside Westminster Abbey, right? The Lord's Prayer, yeah. The Catholic version is shorter. Well, the well the Catholics obviously the one true Christian religion, of course. Um, Protestantism has been a mistake. My, my personal rule of thumb is that, on average, Catholics are less demonic than Protestants. 
with the exception of Catholic converts, who are all Nazis. Like, people born into Catholicism, I think, on average, are better than people who are Protestant. But people who convert to Catholicism are just Nazis who want, like, the Vatican II to be undone. So you can go back to blaming Jews for the crucifixion of Christ, you know? Like, that, like every single Catholic convert I've ever met or heard of or seen online has been, like, a Nazi or close to it. <laughs> Without exception. I don't know anything about Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Also, the Catholics have the best churches. Oh! New lads coming in. Those the beef eaters? What the fuck does that mean? Here to eat beef, your majesty. One last time. And they all just eat fucking... Big fuck plate of ground beef over the cup. What the fuck are you talking? That is legit a thing. Okay. <laughs> Yemen warders, also known as the beef eaters. The Yemen warders of His Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress, the Tower of London, and members of the Sovereign's Bodyguard of the Yemen God Extraordinary, popularly known as the Beef Eaters. <laughs> All right, well, learning lots of new shit today. All right. It's time to eat beef, Your Majesty. One last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeoman, not yeoman, gotcha. Who the fuck is Biden? He can't be that far back, right? He's got he's Let us some probably commend somewhere up front. to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer, the soul of Elizabeth. Twelve rows back on the right. Queen. Is that real or? I found Macron. Oh. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord and Giver of Life. <laughs> Let me in, you Anglo's, and he's like ba banging on a window outside. Yeah, it's. They've got him restrained. He's trying to knock down a wall. Who of thy grace in creation didst form mankind in thine own image. Amen. You know what really gets me about this? It's the fact that it looks like shit. I'm sorry, I actually believe that. Yeah, we get it. It's super expensive, lots of diamonds, whatever. Like, I, I just think it looks like shit. It's fucking tacky. It looks like you just bedazzled, like... Like, yeah, it looked like you, I feel like you could aesthetically replicate this with, like, a bedazzler, you know? Um, and, like, glass beads. It just looks tacky. I, I just don't think there's any aesthetic sensibility to it, you know? What happened? Dude, why don't people wear, like, old-style crowns anymore? Those are dope. Like, the kind that you see in, like, fantasy or whatever. Like, the, like the thing people think of when they think crown, you know? Um, those things are dope as shit. And you can do lots of cool stuff with that. Like, this is like a basic one, because it's just fucking fake diamonds all over. But, um, I don't know. I, yeah. I think it looks way cooler than, like, the stupid little fucking pillow hat. They have many crowns. Yeah, this is the one she's known for, right? The stupid pillow hat, I guess. Yeah. Glory forever. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. The Imperial Crown of the Holy Roman Empire. This is what I'm fucking talking about, okay? If you're going to be the monarchical leader of an imperialist state, then this is what you should look like, all right? Th this is what I'm fucking talking about, okay? Yeah, go big or go home. Absolutely. Nah, dorky. So, okay, so this is also tacky, but I think this leans into being so tasteless that it actually goes back around into being cool. You know what I mean? Like... This just feels like 
how do we make the most expensive crown per square inch? Well, let's just like glue diamonds all over it. You know, whatever. Great. It's pricey. Whereas this is like, you know, there are fucking paintings painted onto it. Like, oh my God, it's amazing. Um, yeah. You're giving way too much credit to the Holy Roman Empire to call them an imperial state. Yeah, I guess. Okay, fine. If you're going to be the monarch of, like, a disaster, I guess. Um, the Holy Crown of Hungary. I can't help but notice that the Holy Crown of Hungary seems to have been in a traffic accident. Um, did, like, a car back up into it in the parking lot or something? This is still better, though. Um, because it's got a painting of Jesus Christ on it. And that's good. What if I, if I Google, like, coolest crown in history what do i get what do i get Ugh, the first result is the fucking queen's crown no it's not this is better this is uh denmark i think um that's cool i i it's better i guess i still think more could be done here we go wait there we go like this tiara shit that's good this looks really nice, okay? That's an aesthetic right there, okay? That's, that's good. It, you can't just make it all, like, gold or something. Like, yeah, have a bit of, like, you know, like, give it a, give it a, give it an aesthetic, you know? Um, yeah. What about this? This is, like, a fantasy crown. That's not real. Royal Crown of America? Ah, yes, how could we forget? Amen. Go forth, O Christian soul, from this world. In Bohemian Crown is cheesy? What the fuck is this? Is this a kid's meal toy? What is Wait, literally, this looks like it's made of candy. What is this? Is this real? However much this cost, it was too, it was, however many dollars this cost to produce, it was that many dollars too expensive. What am I looking at right here? It looks like a toy. Imperial Crown of Russia. I think this looks good. It also has kind of like that bedazzled aesthetic, but I think it's also like, it's a lot more outlandish with its shape, which I think like here it's, it's like the shape is selling it rather than the, um, the like, um, the color choice, I guess. Um. Yeah, I think, I think that looks pretty nice, in my opinion. Crown of Spain. Okay, the Crown of Spain is just like what I think of when I think crown, I think. This is, I think this is, this is like the platonic ideal of a crown, kind of. Um, I think it looks good, like in a classic sense, you know what I mean? Like it's a good, like, like default crown, but I think more could be done with it, you know? I don't think it distinguishes itself uh, as a crown. Now, oh, hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, same with the Dutch crown. Like, this this thing, like this... Well, the one here with Spain is better than this one with the Dutch, like, by far. The Dutch one looks like a toy recreation of this, like a rip-off or something you get in the fashion district of L.A., you know? Um, yeah. Um, crown of Bavaria. This one's nice. Bavarian crown, I like this a lot. I'm glad they left the uh, center bit empty here. It's actually really pretty, wow. Actually, wait. This is like a sleeper hit right here. I like the um, flower petals. This is actually really pretty. I just can't help but feel like... I just can't help but feel like like looking at European crowns. Like, they all kind of look the same, you know? Like, all the European crowns kind of have, like, the same... look, you know? Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if there are any other, like, prominent crowns like, he, like, here's a drawing of Suleiman's crown, but I want to see the actual thing, because I don't actually know. Yeah, here's Louis Fourteenth Again, like, it's pretty and all, but, like, it's, like, the same crown over and over again, right? I guess that's probably because all of these guys were, like, Catholics, right? So all the Catholic monarchs were all arguing that they were the divine rulers, so they would all kind of have, like, the same basic aesthetic, I guess. What about the crown to the heir of the Swedish throne? This is quite nice. I like the blue. What about Kaiser Wilhelm's helmet? This is good. This is what I'm talking about, okay? We need bold, innovative crown designs. Okay? This is the shit I'm talking about. That's some Giga Chad shit right there. Absolutely. 
Oh god, I'm looking through all the shit you guys linked. I'm just trying to find stuff that doesn't look like like the standard. This looks cool. The Iron Crown of the Lombards. This is like older, right? I think this is like an older pre-medieval crown. I like it. The Papal Tiara. How the fuck is that a tiara? All right, stop blinking me, Europeans. We've had enough fucking white boys. See, like, look, right here. Hawaii. There we go. Fuck yeah, dude. Right there. This is what I'm fucking talking about, okay? You roll up on somebody who's got a hat like this or whatever. It's like, oh, European monarch, great dude, whatever. You roll up on somebody with a hat like this, and you're like, holy shit. That's not a crown, that's a hat. This is a crown! Just because it doesn't have, like, fancy diamonds doesn't mean it's not a crown. It's a hat, not a crown. Okay, by crown, I'm going by, like, any fancy pants, like, official hat. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I don't know what the technical distinction is for, like, a crown as opposed to a hat. I just mean, like, an extremely fancy hat. Oh, God, you've linked so many. Oh, my fucking God. Holy shit. Albanian? Dope. Fucking dope. I'm just thinking, like, imagine, like, imagine seeing, like, an address being given by a world leader, and you see them in a hat. What hat should they be wearing? And if I saw something like this, I knew I loved Albania. I knew that I supported Albania in their holy war against the Serbian hordes. I knew there was a goddamn reason. Kazakhstan? Dude! What the fuck is wrong with white people? As soon as you move out of Europe, everything gets cool. What the fuck? Oh, we're like going through all the European monarchs, and it's like, um, would you like to see this variation on like four sort of rounded uh, arches centered, but with a with a cross in the middle, and then like a poofy cushion underneath it? And then it's like you go elsewhere, and it's like, yeah, dude, my crown, I simply have the top half of a bull that I have, um, that I have uh, uh, taxidermied and 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 sort of taped onto my head. Fuck yeah, dude. Thailand king, look at this shit, dude. What the fuck is wrong with white people? Why aren't we this cool? What's wrong with us? Even this has like the fur. Rurik crown? The boots with the fur? Fuck yeah, dude. Absolutely. Nepali and Indian crowns are cool too. Hell yeah. Dude, look at this shit. Ming crown? Aztec headdress? Why the fuck do they have more color than all of us? Why the fuck did the British colonize the entire world and then decided that gray and red were the only colors they wanted to use for their fucking crown? Indian crown? Ming dynasty? What the fuck? This is fucked. I'm getting, like, really racist against white people right now. This is insane. I need to, like, dial- we need to dial it the fuck back. We need to dial it way the fuck back, okay? Because all I see when I see the European crowns now is, like, like, Ponzi inbred pedophile. And then I look at all this shit from the East and I'm like, oh yeah, living God, of course. Like, I, I walk up- I walk up on somebody with this hat and I'm like, oh yes, of course, living God. Hello, envoy of the chosen. Hello. Th uh, hello, sir. H hi. Um. Hello. Absolutely. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> like Aztec. Fuck yeah. Ethiopian with the goddamn fucking hat house that I assume birds can live in. Heavy is the crown. Literally. This shit looks incredibly fucking heavy. Oh my god. Yeah, the mausoleum hat. Emperor of Japan? What the, what the fuck am I even looking at? This would just confuse me. I think I might submit to the holy will of the divine emperor of Japan, the living god, if he approached me with this, simply because I was too confused to question his authority, you know? If somebody with a, with a hat like this walked up to you and he was like, hey, can you, like, die for, the, for, for me or something? 
uh, yeah, okay, yeah, um, uh, 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 yeah, sure. And then I'll sort of run off, like, okay, I guess I gotta do that then. I, like, I wouldn't think about it, you know? Here's Suleiman's crown. Oh, is this the real version versus the drawn version? The real version's still super dope. Um, oh, fuck. Aura? Oh, right here. Oh, fucking, whatever. Okay. Um, Portugal is an interesting one. The Diadem of the Stars. Dude! That's cool as shit. I've never even seen the word diadem used outside of Diablo 2. A lot of these links are lacking. Qing Dynasty Crown. This is cool, dude. It looks like edible. You know what I mean? Vietnamese crown? Okay, wait, hold on. Black and gold with dragons on it? Ah, wait, this is actually like A-plus tier. What the fuck? R right, like, right off the bat. Holy shit. Yeah, my fucking... Um, we have... Um, our crowns have the cross to symbolize our devotion to Christ. Oh, yeah, my crown has dragons, because dragons are cool. And also, I call myself the Dragon King. <laughs> fuck. Vlad the Impaler crown. It's pretty dope. It's also kind of getting, like, aided by the fact that it's on Vlad the Impaler, who's, who's pretty drippy on his own, you know. Anglo-Saxon crown before the English became cucks. Ah! Before the fucking Romans cucked them, dude. Absolutely. The Angloids were so based before the Romans came in and introduced Romans' love for ceremony and bureaucracy to these sort of naturally misshapen skulls of the Angloids. That was, that was like the match made in hell right there. The industriousness and civil bureaucracy of the Romans were fine on their own, and the, uh, let's say, quirky eccentricity of the, um, oh, sorry, Normans, not Romans, my bad, the Normans, um, of the, um, of the Angloids were fine on their own. Uh, but then when you, um, you mix them and it all gets ruined. Yeah, post-Roman, yeah, yeah, they built the bridge, Londinium, blah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the history of England goes back like five trillion years. Look at the Pope one. I'll respect it when he wears it, okay? Actual existing socialism crown? Yeah. Okay, we have to stop, because this has gone on way too long. We will finish it with the greatest crown ever in history, which is Soleiman's uh, onion hat. Nobody has ever topped this. It did not... You know it was good because he never needed to add, like, a bunch of jewels and gold and shit. Like, this is all. That's all. This was enough. This was fine. And he was right. No ornamentation was necessary. There's a small crown on top of it. Is there? Oh, this little... Oh, wait. That makes it even better, though. Holy shit, dude. Because that's... Then it's like a joke or whatever. It's like... Ah, oh, yeah, dude, here's my three-foot-wide onion hat, and then on top of it, I have, like, this cartoon crown. That's great. I fucking love that. <laughs> it's got its own crown. Yeah, the crown is for the onion, not for Suleiman. Um, learn learn the, um, the, the royal hierarchy. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Dial it back. Sorry, let's return to the real world with its boring modernity and um, Eurocentric Christian aesthetics where nobody wears feathers. In the name of God the Father Almighty who created... Why couldn't the Aztecs have discovered gunpowder earlier and taken over the world, man? This could have been so much cooler of a ceremony. We could have had, like, the royal consort proprietress of the, um, of the Oceanic territories, um... As, as laid claim to by, uh, I, yeah, I don't know, um, Quetzalcoatl um, and his divine warriors or something. And it would be the 21st century, and you would have a bunch of, like, ripped eight-foot-tall brown dudes um, dancing around a pyre uh, where, they're, where they're, like, d d fucking tossing in uh, Queen Elizabeth or something. Absolutely. We'd just be bitching about how lame all of the um, Aztec stuff is. I, fe I do feel like there's something kind of distinctly soulless about a lot of um, Euro-Christian uh, cultural tendencies, 
But I mean, obviously, it's a grass is always greener kind of deal, right? I'm sure there were people in 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 like Aztec culture who were like, "Oh, blood sacrifices again! This is so tacky," you know. And if they if they could be shown like a picture of a guy in like a poofy red suit wearing a like with a halberd and a big hat, they'd be like, "Dude, that's so cool! That's so much more vibrant than what we have," you know. It's always the grass is always green. Yeah, it's 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 a whole thing. The in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, who suffered for thee. Then again, the fact that they're closing down hospitals to commemorate her funeral does kind of make this feel like a sort of abstract, indirect human sacrifice, right? That's the thing, okay? Human sacrifice is part and parcel to Euro-Christian culture, okay? We just do it indirectly. We kill people for God and in ceremony's name all the time. We just do it in a really boring, bureaucratic way, as opposed to in a cool, direct, upfront way, you know? Back with the Aztec sacrifices, they would do a whole day of partying and drugs. You know, the people they sacrificed were fucking loaded up on hallucinogenics when they went up there to the sacrificial slab, you know? Nowadays, when the state sacrifices someone for pseudo-religious purposes, it's the police gunning down a black guy for looking at them funny from, like, through a car window. And the ceremony we're preserving there is the ceremony of, like, white hegemony. But there's no fucking partying, and the black guy doesn't even get to be high on hallucinogenics when he dies. Like, what the fuck? Bring, 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 bring back tradition. We, we, had, we had something. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who was poured out upon thee and anointed thee, in communion with all the blessed saints, and aided by the angels and archangels and all the armies of- They were mostly war prisoners from other tribes that was done to instill fear in the enemies. A reminder that no when I'm going on rants about how we should bring back Aztec sacrifices, please do not take my hyperbolic statements about history as a fact. I'm not a historian. I am not even remotely educated on Aztec culture. I am uh, sort of running on a comedy bit. Uh, please do not get your political positions from my obviously hyperbolic- uh, uh, mid-segment stunlocks. I love you guys. Uh, let's keep going. Of the heavenly <laughs> host, may thy portion this day be in peace and thy dwelling in the heavenly Jerusalem. My best Amen. knowledge of the Aztec people and what they look like. My, my best understanding of the matter at hand. Okay, all right. Ooh. Serving cunt. <laughs> God grant to the... Oh, we've introduced a new element. You keep stopping on cum? It's a talent that I have. These guys look cooler. I agree, those guys do look cooler than the other guys. <laughs> oh, they're gonna fight! This is the duel! Where two, two honored men fight for the privilege of being laid to rest beside her as her royal guard in death. Who will win? the fuck is Biden? Is he really- uh, we have to show, like, the one black guy in the crowd to deflect accusations of racism. Did anyone see the footage of, uh, Charles shaking hands with people and he, like, skips over the black guy? That was Charles, right? Not Andrew? I- I only br watched the clip super quick when I got up. Well, let me see if I can find that. I think I liked it. Let me check my likes. Um... Oh yeah, fuck yeah, dude. This is what I'm talking about. There we go. That's what I like to see, man. Nice and overt. I like he even he even sort of like glances over too. He's like Next is the next one what? Let me, mm, nope, mm, mm, all right. 
in truth, this could just be a flub, but like, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> it looks pretty, it's like pushes the hand away. It's like, yes, skip over. It looks pretty fucking bad. You know, it could be a flub. You never really know just from looking, but like, yeah, yeah. That doesn't look, doesn't look great. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, yeah. Biden forced to sit 14 rows back behind presidents of Poland at Queen's funeral service. Dude, holy shit. They really did think he was going to fucking Molotov the, um, the coffin. That's amazing. He pro like he would, they were probably like arguing over seating or whatever. And Biden was like, like making some very threatening comments and they fucking moved him way back or something. Oh my God. Or, or like, you know, in all honesty, it might, it's not actually impossible that there's a hidden rule that they're keeping the Irish Catholics farther back. That might actually legitimately be a thing that's in the rules that they're just not announcing publicly. I mean, she was the, the, the head of the English church. You know, I, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Biden's going to come back to America being like a Black Lives Matter warrior now that he's been subject to direct discrimination for his ancestry. Okay. Deacons of the Deep. Which one of these guys is the main one? I'll say the organ's pretty cool. Well, organs are cool, like, in general, right? Vampire music? Oh, shit, it's the vampire hunter. He's got the sword. This does, this does feel like it would be like the, a boss of a platinum game though, right? Like attending a royal funeral, and then as the organ music kicks up, like the, the tentacles sort of whip out of the, uh, the coffin and start eating up the people near the front. And then like you get off and into the main aisle, and like you see the, the monster from an upward angle or something. I don't know. It feels like it's appropriately situated. Frankly, I'm okay with just sort of mentally associating cathedrals with uh, video game boss fights because A, they make for good boss fights, and B, that's the best thing you can do with a cathedral anyway. The, the, uh, it's sort of, in terms of like the culturally vestigial stuff, you know, I don't give a fuck about the religious officiation. If you're going to do anything with a cathedral, it might as well be an, an eldritch boss fight. This fucking guy. <laughs> That's uh, Harry, right? I really don't follow the royal shit that much. Isn't this is the guy who's who married an American commoner, right? And they're super racist against her. Like there are a bunch of Brit, like the, like there's the the brown lady, and then like Meghan Markle's, and then a lot of British people are like, I don't like her character that much. She's nasty, and then it's just like a brown woman standing there politely. I've seen a lot of people talking about how fucking racist they are towards her. Um, apparently, she wasn't even allowed at the funeral. And that he wasn't allowed to wear military uniform, even though Harry was actually a soldier. Like, a, like this guy, like Harry, who's a member of the royal family, apparently was actually a soldier. Um, and he's not allowed to wear a royal uniform. Yeah, he, he was a captain in Afghanistan. Because um, he left the royal family. Yeah, which is cool. I think you should get to wear a cooler uniform if you leave the royal family. Look at his medals. Well, yeah, he has his medals, but he's not in, in, in regalia, you know. 
Yeah, did, so, like, wait, remind me. So, Prince Harry, he wants to be a normal boy, right? I mean, kind of, right? Like, he went off and served. If you're a member of the royal family, you do not have to run off and serve in the military. That is not a thing you have to do. That is not a necessary... Um, every time I see anything about this guy, he seems, like, like kind of well-adjusted. Like, I, I mean, he's still a royal, but, like, you know what I mean, right? Oh! He's the son of Diana! I totally forgot about that, yeah. He, he would have been... How, how old was he when Princess Diana died? Was, was he, like, like two or something? Or did he actually get a chance? Six? Okay. Well, the, 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 good, the good blood of Diana, I guess, sort of passed down. Girlfriend. It takes time, especially for myself and my brother. Um, you ain't ever gonna find someone who's gonna... He looks like a normal dude. I mean, I don't know. That's cool. Like, he doesn't look like some sort of freakish, you know, um... Some kind of, like... Who's the really old royal? Am I thinking of Charles? The guy who looked, like, dead, basically? Or is that another one? Who's the, who's the guy who looked, like, dead? I don't know. Oh, Philip, that's right, that's right. Well, even Charles, I don't know. There's something about being a member of the royal family, I think, that just kind of rots at you a bit. Not just literally with the teeth, either. But Harry looks fine, I guess. During the training courses, it just couldn't happen. And also, every time I said, right, I'm just having a pee, the guy on the back would start doing this. Which, you know, it's not helpful for anybody. And then a tour of his digs at... I guess it kind of helps that he's hot. Um... Harry, I mean. And, and he is. The disdain the royals had for Diana is vile. The queen called her unpleasant for touching AIDS victims. Well, yeah, because, like, it, like, Queen Elizabeth II's, like, protocol was just, like, archetypically British. Like, she defined the last century of British character, which is, like, just stay quiet and pretend that everything's all right, you know? So, like, any active effort to improve things, um, any, like, activist tendencies, um, like what Diana did with the AIDS victims, right, is, is considered kind of like a distasteful, you know, sort of like, um, like, like it's, it's, it's unroyal, you know? Which is why a lot of people speculate that Diana was assassinated by the, um, the royal family and that the, the death wasn't an accident, which I haven't really looked into that conspiracy theory. I don't know if there's any legitimacy to it. Um, but, like, the idea of the royal family assassinating one of their more um, tr troublesome family members isn't like doesn't doesn't strike me as a, like an entirely impossible thing. But you know, I don't know. I I don't know. How are you mispronouncing the most white name ever? I think Diana sounds better than Diana personally. But you know. Queen had two disabled siblings that were sentimental asylums and died and were never visited. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that makes it pretty easy to believe the Queen would have Diana killed. Um, the whole, like, they had two, like, inbred, mentally deficient um, siblings who were, um, they were, like, um, they were, like, killed off in the public eye and just sent to, like, quiet, like, mental facilities to rot until they eventually actually died, you know? Like, like, like you, like you'd have like a fourteen-year-old who's 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 not mentally well, and it's like, yeah, sent to a farm, like literally, though, right? Like, um, yeah, yeah, like recorded as dead, and then, um, and then just sent off and and never visited, and they just like lived in obscurity until they died. Yeah, which wasn't great. That's not a great thing to do, I think. Um, who are the queen's hidden cousins, Nerissa and Catherine Bosleyon? Um. Yeah, it's, they were, yeah, they were, yeah, they were there for, um, yeah.
Oh, shit! They look like Mounties. It's insane how large horses are. What the fuck is with this one, though? This is, in, this is an insanely large horse. They are Mounties? Oh, okay. Look, look how far out this guy's legs have to be to accommodate the size of this behemoth. I think JFK and Ted Kennedy didn't find out about their lobotomized sister till like 1999. Yeah. Because, like, the Kennedys were America's royal family, right? Like, not really, but, like, yeah, really, you know? Um, the Clintons are, too. I don't think the Clintons... I don't think the Clintons have ever reached, like, Kennedy's level of prestige. Um, but, yeah, kind of like, you know, a little less so. Why does JFK receive so much praise anyway? Well, the Kennedy family was really politically powerful, and to an extent, still is. Um, and JFK, JFK's older brother died in World War II. JFK wasn't like the favored son of his father, um, but there was still enough, like I guess, leftover political clout to, to sort of like launch him into the um, into the uh, 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 you know the presidency when, when he when he got there. Um, yeah, Joe Kennedy III lost to Ed Markey just a little bit ago, just a couple months ago. Um, to have a Kennedy lose out to a more progressive guy, pretty big deal. But a lot of, a lot of, uh, JFK's legacy was cemented by his assassination, you know. Kennedy was mob-related? Yeah, yeah. See, the hats look fine when you can't see the stupid bucket straps. What about the Obamas? No, not even close. The, the Obamas didn't, w w did not rise to prominence from some kind of, like, shadowy, deep state political family. The Obamas, like, uh, Barack Obama was just, like, a middle class dude, you know, who, who, who got his way up. Funnily enough, like, I, I will say this, okay? I fucking hate Obama. However, I, Obama is, like, one of the biggest modern, like, American success stories we have. You know what I mean? For, for like, um, child of immigrants, you know, like, um, uh, uh like, a, a black guy, um, born in the, God, what, the 60s? I actually forget when he was born. When was he? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and then to make his way all the way up to presidency? That's pretty cool. 60, yeah, 61. Yeah, I was thinking, like, late 50s, early 60s, yeah. Um, what about the Bushes? The, the Bushes are more of like a political power family. But Obama doesn't, I mean, for Obama, it's just like, it's, it's just Obama, you know? I like how these losers have to have Royal Navy printed on their fucking caps, because otherwise you would think they're like, um, they're like gay bathhouse attendants, or like, uh, LARPers or something, you know? Like... Now it's the real deal. All right, lads. Oh, were those feathers I saw? Actual feathers and not just like fake ones? I thought I saw feathers and I thought they were gray and I was gonna make fun of them for having feathers. What's the name for this kind of like architectural implement? Does anyone know? When you have to like walk through the corridor of pillars? What's the... It's like a thing. An arch? Well, I know it's an arch, but it's like, it, it's like a thing that goes through a building. It's because, like, old buildings had these have to be supported with a columnade. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Colonnade. Or columnade. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's a path. Well, everything's a path. What about Biden, though? Um, yeah, Biden. Biden wasn't born into like political power. I don't think. Um, I mean, in it, you know, it is. It is a. a, a, a 
America does have a lot of um a lot a lot of um I, what would you call it um you know favoritism directed towards some political families but it does you know it is it is entirely possible for people to rise up from nothing um to become president um the the critical difference though by rise up from nothing i mean you can't you don't need to have had prior political power but you can't have been poor that's the thing um poverty is the real gatekeep um like you can like you can rise up from the middle class but real poverty taints you for life um it, it, you know, um, in, in so many ways that sort of blocks you out. I think, I think a lot of that is almost kind of like a, like a, an, an institutional barrier that's maintained like semi-deliberately because people who have experienced real poverty are far more likely to be sympathetic to and aware of these problems. Um, whereas if you're in the middle class, you often still believe this, you know, the, 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 the like American dream, like, you know, the idea of living in a meritocracy or that if you work real hard. And imagine how strong your belief in a meritocracy would be if you were born to a middle class family that believed in it and then you worked your way up to be president. Uh, like, that's got to instill in your brain some pretty, like, high level meritocratic delusions, right? One of the biggest problems with political power, just as a, like, as a concept, is that the people who are lucky enough to achieve it are usually sort of um, systemically incentivized uh, to um, uh, to believe that they were able to achieve it as a product of the innate fairness of the system. You know, of course, the royals believe that too when they're crowned. So you know, whatever. People in power will always work to justify the legitimacy of their own uh, power. Would Sanders have actually been rags to riches? I don't know what Sanders' like living situation was when he was younger. I know he wasn't wealthy. He was poor? Oh, well, there you go. New co yeah, okay, we've decided it now. The DNC rigged the election because they didn't want Bernie to win, because they knew that America's first born in poverty president. Uh, when I, well, I'm, I'm speaking in generalities here. There's probably been at least a few presidents who experienced poverty at some points in their life, right? I mean, going all the way back to the 18th century, I mean, I'm sure you can find some examples of, like, poor people who worked their way up through the military and then, like, you know, distinguished themselves in that way. There might be some. Yeah, what about Lincoln? Was Lincoln... Was Lincoln poor? Ah, it said he grew up a member of a poor family in Kentucky and Indiana. Never mind, the system works. We live in a meritocracy. We're good. Don't question the system. Getting our triumph of the will here with the big swooping uh, camera shots. Abe Lincoln was like superhuman. Are they just walking in circles? Um, well, he was very tall. Grant was also kind of poor, like lower middle class. See, I don't know who these guys are. These guys aren't military. They're too old. Also, they don't look military at all. Um, some of these guys are squeezed into these outfits. They, they, they hold... So, wait, these are the beef eaters? They are in the military? I thought the beef eaters were the other guys. When I looked at the beef eaters before, I thought they were all young men. These are the older guys. Oh, I guess I just... Okay, I guess I just... Um, all right. Well, then they're not... They're the oldest military unit. Okay, well, these are clearly officers. They don't even look like military officers. I don't know. Beef eaters requires 22 years of service. Gotcha. Are these bows? No way. These are fucking... Those are... Those are fucking longbowmen. fucking archers company here. Jesus Christ. 
very important for taking out infantry. Yes, of course. The Royal Longbowman Unit. How long ago should the Royal Longbowman Unit have been disbanded? My god. Okay. Shall we go further back? Where, where, where is the, like, Greek Fire Brigade or something? How far... Where... The, the longbowmen have been around since what? I don't know, what, the 1400s or something? Yeah, yeah, like, if we go back further than that, like, what's the la- what's the- Where's the guys with, like, hatchets? I think they fought in Iraq. I don't think they used their bows in Iraq. Are they gonna shoot the queen's casket with flaming arrows? Please, Vosh. Oh, fuck, wait, holy shit. Are we gonna get a viking funeral? Nah, that's too based. Too base for them. Sort of float her coffin in a little pond as they um, they fire uh, incendiary. Uh. You d how how do you guys feel about like a modern Viking funeral, where they send that they send the 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 coffin off on a little raft and then like a bunch of dudes with um, SA 80s with incendiary ammunition, um, like 80 of them line up along the uh, the coast and just like the the night is just lit up for a few minutes as they incinerate it from a distance. I'm, I think that's good, you know? They drone strike it, yeah. You could go, you could go with a bunch of shit, dude. You could, um, you could, you could use, like, light artillery to fire incendiary rounds at it. Um, you could just use a flamethrower. Flamethrowers shoot, like, a hundred feet, you know? Like, you could just, um, you could, you could literally just, like, kick it off into the water and have, like, the fire, like, the, the, the flamethrower brigade just, just launch plumes of napalm at it, you know? People uh, be cremated in a fusion bomb? Yeah, of course, naturally. Napalm burns in water? Good, then it'll keep burning after it sinks. Okay, I guess we're just going in circles, just like my rambling. Who are these? Royal bookkeepers? Don't they look like librarians? That's not an insult, I'm genuinely asking. Just royal staff? Okay, just royal staff, I guess. Vosh, I'm fucking retarded. It was an Apache longbow that was in Iraq. You fucking idiot, dude. I love you. You're fucking great. Um, I actually heard that the British de deployed um longbows in Iraq, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. This is, I mean, what, what is an attack helicopter if not just the modern iteration of a longbow? Just going in circles. Wait, was somebody on their phone in there? Oh, okay, I thought, okay. How fucking rad would it be, though, if, like, the kid that was looking out the window was on his phone, just looking down, and you, you could just see, like, I don't know, Fortnite skin previews on his, um, on his iPhone. He's literally nine. Yeah, Fortnite skin previews. I'm pretty sure that's Prince George. Yeah, Fortnite skin previews. Making TikToks. Does anyone know what I say when I say that TikTok of the, the, the like, Zoomer doing that, like, I think this was back when it was Music Lee, but it was the, don't you give up, nah, 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 and his, like, dying grandpa, who was a million years old, was behind him or something. Prince George uh, doing that at Lizzie's, um, Lizzie's funeral. Can anyone link that? Does anyone know? This is, this is like a, uh, this was before it was even called TikTok, I think. Um, it was, um...
This, ah, oh, yeah, this one. With the, or was this Vine? No, it's too long for Vine. This was Musical.ly, yeah, it says down here in the bottom right. I would just, yeah, George doing that with, uh, with, with, with Lizzie's uh, rotting body in the background. Phenomenal. We're doomed as a species. Nah, kids, like, young people or whatever have always been total fucking retards. The problem is that nowadays they're given phones and they can record it. Just keep that in mind. Like, whenever, whenever you see kids, like, posting stupid shit online, like, you were that dumb when you were that age. You just probably didn't have a phone. You know? Um, yeah. Which is good. I'm really fucking glad I didn't have a smartphone when I was 10. Like, holy shit. I, I genuinely think, like, good parenting is keeping your kid off the internet until they're at least, like, 11 or 12 or something. Even that, like, fuck, but I don't want my kids on the internet until they're, like, 30. <laughs> you know? But, like, but like realistically, like, by the time they're old enough to get into middle school, like, ev like they're gonna, like, everyone they know is gonna be immersed in online culture, so you can't really keep it from them. They'll just resent you for trying to keep it away from them. But, like, at the very least, please do not give your, like, five-year-olds a smartphone or a an iPad or something. Um, holy shit. Like, take them outside or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just do something. Um, yeah. Kid kids that age aren't old enough to understand that there are, like, benefits to not just, like, doing the, the dopamine drip feed. What the fuck is the point of bringing out all these swords if not one of them is going to duel? Okay, wouldn't it have been so much cooler if the British weren't like a fundamentally stuffy people and like the royal rules for a, a funereal service for a head, uh, you know, the, the, for the monarch um, involved like some festivities, you know? Um, like, like we're, like we're a fucking Mongol tribe or something. Like, imagine if they had a bunch of guys in silly hats who had to juggle on unicycles or some shit. Or like you had, you had guys with like paddle staves, like standing on top of a beam, knocking each other into like a pool of water or some shit like that. Or, or, or people, people like axe throwing or whatever. Like, fuck yeah, dude. If you, if you're gonna like go into festivities, at least like make it fun, you know? Some mud wrestling? Fuck yeah, do some mud wrestling. The great thing is, like, if the, if the, if the royal rules for, um, the death of a monarch was, like, two big titty chicks have to mud wrestle and they're naked, I bet you they could get that on the BBC with no censors. Because it would be, like, um, like, what, like, what is, what is, like, the British rules for, like, broadcasting standards next to the royal tradition, right? Like, I bet they'd be, like, you know, oh, well, if you censor this, you're actually censoring the, the funeral, so, and then they would just have those giant fucking titties swinging around everywhere. This would, of course, this would be if England was a real country, um, which it's not. It's a fake country. England is nothing more than a, um, a Norman deception. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a product of Norman imperialism. Real Anglo, Anglo culture preserved only in fragments uh, in, with, with the Welsh. Not represented. You can show titties on TV after 9 p.m. here anyway. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot the United States is, like, particularly pathologic um, when, it, when it comes to our um, censorship standards. Like, you can go on Sweden, and there'll just be, like, tits out or whatever. The Welsh are Gaelic, not Anglo-Saxon. Oh, okay, never mind. Whatever. The Gaelic people are better than the Anglos anyway. We have mainstream movies with full frontal here in Europe. Well, yeah, you know, because like, and like, let's be real here. The idea that having bare tits on TV is going to in any way negatively affect the youth of your country is entirely a product of like insane American evangelical bias. There's absolutely no, like what, like absolutely, like the standards we have, um, where you can just blood and violence everywhere 
Um, but like, like tits is like NC-17, like XXX, blah, blah. Like, obviously that's completely fucking retarded. Like, there's literally no justification at all. There's, it's completely insane. It's fully insane. Um, Bosch evangelism started in England. Yeah, but I feel like we've done it a lot worse. Here in the UK, we're not allowed to show erections. Do you think we're allowed to show erections here in the United States? I think our sauna culture uh, helps here a lot. Actually, that might be a good explanation. Maybe colder countries where saunas are more common, people are more chill about nudity. Because, like, back when you all lived in villages or whatever, like, in order to not freeze to death, you would just have, like, the sauna house, and people just got used to seeing each other naked. But America's mostly, like, temperate, so, I don't know. People use saunas to not freeze. Um, yeah, aren't I right? Yeah, right. Like in, um, like in, um, like northern, like Finland or whatever. Like the sauna house, like historically, like there'd literally be a house where you'd have like heated rocks um, that you would like drop into water to keep like one one little building really really warm, and it would just be kind of like a something to like, a kind of like a necessity basically. Yeah, for medicinal purposes as well. People would give birth in saunas, yeah. It was, yeah, like a community spot, basically. And saunas are cool, by the way. Um, it's, it's, they're, they're, like, pretty healthy, right? Like, you shouldn't dry yourself out in there. But, like, going to a sauna every once and again is kind of like a massage. It, it's just sort of like a, like a body, um, I don't know. Like, sort of knock your body, you know, give, give it a little kick, you know. It helps circulation. Yeah, like a massage does. Yes, you should be properly wet at all times in a sauna. Yeah, you don't want to be dry in a sauna, right? Like, you, like the point is that steam should be coming up that should keep everything, like, damp, right? I kind of like these jams. That's why I haven't skipped. We're also near the end. Interesting, Red Cascadia. I hadn't heard of that. You're going to watch the second half of the state funeral? Alright, let's not get crazy now. It sounds like the Imperial March. Just very officious. Into the car it goes. So, th so this was like... This... Wait, what's the other video put out by the royal family? The committal service. Oh god, there are two halves to it. Okay, well I think we watched enough. Don't you guys think so? I think we watched enough. I feel like we have sufficiently immersed ourselves in angloid, um, culture. You know. I'm... I'm only going to end this, um, as as I have several times before, with uh, with with the changing of the guard at the Arlington National Cemetery because I want to contrast the English, uh, 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 you know, um, royal ceremony with our um, our based in proletarian military ceremony here. Is this PBS? Yeah, it's PBS. Okay, so it's not DMCA. Make it stop, make it end. So, I don't... I'm not... Ne so, I'm not inherently against anything for being tradition, right? I think that things should be kind of, like, evaluated on their own merits. Tradition can be fun. 
certainly. Like, there can be kind of, like, meaning we assign to it, and meaning is good, because meaning, like, gives weight to the things we do, and that's cool. Um, and the, uh, the changing of the guard is, uh, super, super, super ceremonial. But it's ceremony for, like, a pretty decent cause, I guess? Because, like, the ceremony is, like, meant to represent the innate formality and dignity of guarding the symbol that represents lost soldiers whose bodies were never recovered. That seems like, I don't know. Seems like something. Also, there is a remarkable amount of, um, sort of professional, um, consistency maintained by the people who perform this, uh, this task, which is, uh, interesting, if nothing else. This seems like the most boring job ever. I do not deny that. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I am Sergeant Davenport of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, United States Army, Guard of Honor, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. This ceremony that you are about to witness is the changing of the guard. In keeping with the dignity of this ceremony, it is requested that everyone remain silent and standing. Thank you. He could definitely make a living with a voice that pays a lot better. Oh, the people who do this job are like fanatics. There's no job they want to do more than this one. You don't accidentally become a guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. You spend your, like, like your, your military career gunning for it by being better than everyone else. These are like the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. And it's the honor of their lives being able to do this. Um, and I guarantee you that after they're done with this, they're set for life. Being a guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is, in terms of, like, personal prestige, is up there with being a part of, like, SEAL Team 6. Um, they can do whatever they want. They're totally fine. Rundown of the requirements. I could, like, it, you can look it up if you want. The requirement for being a guard of the two of the other soldiers is the same. They, you have to do, like, dress rehearsals where they measure every metal in your uniform down to 164th an inch. Um, and if anything's off, it's like, you're, you, they, like, just kill you. They just shoot you right there. It, it's insane. The whole thing is insane. These guys are insane. Everything about this is the same. Um... You can't deny these guys all look the exact same, though. Well, the point of the uniform is depersonalization. The idea is that they aren't people, they're just guards of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. There was a guy who dropped the rifle, right? Yeah, I mean, they've been doing this for decades. The changing of the guard happens non-stop. They've continued to perform this service in the middle of hurricanes. There have been mistakes made, but, like, overall, the, I guess, the, the sort of, um, the, the, the ceremonial integrity of these guys have been maintained to a pretty incredible degree. Especially because, um, unlike your stupid fucking British Queen ceremony, this one's open to the public. This doesn't just happen for the benefit of a group of, like, aristocrats, royals, and pedophiles who come down. Um, anyone can show up and watch this. Uh, which, uh, does kind of heighten the, uh, the stakes a bit. I mean, it's happening all the time. Like, three times a day. Or more. The USS State Funerals, too. I know, I'm, I'm just distinguishing the ceremony here. I know the USS State Funerals. Um... Have you seen what happens when someone erupts? Yeah, they get shot out. Imagine if our soldiers move like this in real combat situations. Yeah, I feel like this might be sort of, um, tactically disadvantageous. Our, 
Are they always white? Oh. I don't think being white is a job requirement. Um, I am sure there is some degree of at least implicit racial bias when it comes to the selection of their elite soldiers. Um, but uh, I do not believe that's uh, listed on the, uh, the requirement. Why are they still using the M1 Garand? Um, this is a ceremonial role. Uh, they are not using these guns. Tomb guards may not drink any alcohol on or off duty for the rest of their lives. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff like that. They can't curse either, I don't think. They're not allowed to curse. Oh, the M14, not the M1 Garand, yeah. Either way, a ceremonial rifle. They're not exactly out there fighting. Oh. You know this is not a voluntary job, right? Yes, it is. All jobs are voluntary. Oh. And all you have to do to not be a guard of the Tomb of the Unknown Ready. Soldier is fuck up anything Fire. ever at any point in your life. Reset. All you have to do is oh. make any mistake at any point, and, uh, <laughs> and you're out. So what you're saying oh. is they're guarding it with inferior technology? Oh. Um, they do have service pistols. I believe they're, um, six hours. Pass on your orders. Oh, and order. Three men as directed. Order. Okay, yeah, here we go. Their pistols are, um, more serviceable. M17 Tomb of the Unknown Soldier pistols produced only for these guys. 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment. Um, striker-fired pistols with non-rail aluminum grip module, stainless steel side, wood grip inserts, like... As, as God intended. A 21-round magazine and the same optic cut by the MHS contract. Blah, 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 blah. Um, pistols high polished to withstand the inclement weather while the Tomb Sentinels stand guard. And I think, like, the guns are made... Yeah, there's, like, a bunch of, like, ceremonial shit. Uh, each of the four pistols bear the name of Silence, Respect, Dignity, or Perseverance. Because there are only four pistols, right? Because there's the guard and then the next guard. So there only need to be two. Like, yeah, or, or yeah, um... And then, like, the couple others or whatever. Custom wooden grips. In 1921, the Chosen Unknown was transported to the U.S. aboard the USS Olympia. The custom wood grips are made with wood from the USS Olympia and include the crest of the Third Guard, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Identification Badge insert. Um, XXI caulking insurations are engraved on the side to signify the 21 steps it takes for the Tomb Sentinels to walk by the tomb. Yeah, it's 21 steps back and forth. No more, no less. Um, you know, 21 gun salute. Like... Every, the, the 21 steps they make back and forth is meant to be a representation of the 21 gun salute you do to honor a soldier being laid, um, laid to rest. So they're doing that all the time for, for them. Why is it 21 gun salute? Old tradition, I don't know why it's 21 gun salute. Same with the 21 round magazines. Aluminum, uh, base plate engraved with the names of Greek figures included in the Tomb of the Unknown. And then the serial number is full of meaning, and you see 21 a bunch over, yeah. Um, personally, I would have preferred if these were 1911s, because 1911s are, like, the most quintessentially American pistol in existence. So I feel like that would have been a bit more, um, a, a sort of a, a bit more iconic, but, you know, whatever. So this isn't insane to you? Well, it is insane, but um, I don't mind the ceremony that much, because this isn't an authoritarian ceremony. Um, these guys are dressed up to the nines to, like, honor the dead. This isn't being done to honor any living official. It's not being done to defend the Constitution, the United States of America, the president, or the military. They're not doing this outside the Pentagon to defend the Pentagon, you know? It's not like Buckingham Palace, where you have the hat guys doing their change of the guard to represent their defense of the monarchy. In this case, they're just celebrating the, um, the, uh, the honored dead. Which, again, ceremony being what ceremony is, you know, not exactly a necessary, um... Uh, uh, you know, um, ceremony, but it, it's, it's, I don't know. Go! Ready! Hey! Reset! Springfield 14s oh. and M1 Garands. Okay, they use both. And they have clicky boots, or clicky shoes. Oh. 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 
that feels like that's the actual intended reason for the ceremony, but it just feels like jerking off the military. Maybe this could just be my bias, but when I see this, I just don't really think of the military that much. Um, the just everything about this um, this uh, this ceremony doesn't really like it doesn't feel like um, like worship of the military to me. It's obviously a military tradition, um, but uh, it it doesn't it does that's just it doesn't seem like the feeling to me. How, though? They're literally soldiers. Oh, God. Okay, just because it's a military ceremony for the military dead doesn't mean that it's jerking off the military. A ceremony that jerks off the military would be, like, the point of it would be about, like, the military. But this is about honoring the dead. You know, there's an implicit apology in the ceremony. You realize that, right? Like, the idea is that if you die at war, if you're, um, if you're, like, sort of ceremonially commemorated at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, like, you're like a lost child of the United States. Like, you know, you were, you were left. And this is, like, in perpetual honor of those people. Um, when I think of jerking off the military or whatever, I think of, like, military parades, which are about celebrating, um, strength or, like, the idea, like, our military best. But there's nothing really American exceptionalist about this. Like, at all, actually. Again, like, it is an American military ceremony, but the ceremony's point isn't really, like, where the strongest were the best, you know? Yeah, it seems kind of like a, an implicit, eternal apology to those, um, to, to, to those who, you know, who weren't able to be recovered, I guess, you know? It, like, it, it's kind of like the way, um, like, Veterans Day, in theory, isn't really like a jerking off the military day. It's more like, hey, sorry, you have PTSD and are missing an arm kind of thing. Um, why is it an apology? Because they're the unknown soldier. Because they, they weren't brought back. I could absolutely see this ceremony still being done in socialist America. Oh, of course it would. Absolutely, yeah. I don't, I don't, this, I don't think this is inherently like a capitalist ritual at all. I don't think there's any relationship between this and capitalism. Um, this could be done by any, yeah, any economic system could facilitate a, a ceremony like this. Um, it's a cult of sacrifice? Um, no, no, I disagree with that. Because a cult, the point of a cult of sacrifice would be honor the dead and honor the glory their death brought them. But the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier isn't about venerating the sacrifice. It's only about honoring the dead. There's no, like, they died, we should all seek to replicate their, 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 you know, their zealotry or where, their, their zealousness, you know. Um, it's just, they're dead, and we honor them. You know, there's, there's, yeah, it's, it's, it's sullen. It's not, uh, jingoistic or bombastic. Um, it's quiet. It's deliberately quiet. You don't talk when you're around. The only time they talk here at the, um, is at the changing of the guard. And when they talk, it is to ask people to not talk. Um, it's, it's like a mourning ceremony. Uh, M-O-U-R-N, not morning, like, beginning of the day. Um, yeah. I think that just the main thing that distinguishes it to me is that there's nothing really supremacist about the ceremony. The, uh, robotic movements of the, uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier guards are just meant to be, like, an expression of the dedication and commitment that it takes to bear the responsibility of honoring their, um, their dead. If it was more about, like, military strength, they wouldn't be walking around with, with rifles that were outdated 60 years ago. How often do they switch out? Isn't it, like, every eight hours? So three times a day, I think? But what's respect for if they're dead? Isn't this a bit LARPy honest? Well, it's ceremonial. Um, I don't really think you can say it's LARPy, because, I mean, they're not making a pretense at, like, sort of military um, effectiveness here. Like, they're not, it's, it, it, they're not, like, acting like they're doing combat drills or whatever. Um... But as for the, um, as for, like, the, the importance of celebrating the dead, I mean, it might be irrational, I guess, in, like, utilitarian sense, but I think we just kind of have to own up to the fact that all humans in all points of history, in all cultures, honor the dead. You know what I mean? 
Like, like we, we can't really escape that, can we? Like, everyone does that. Um, in some fashion or another, like, every culture has done that all the time forever. It's basically just an inherent part of being human, it seems. Uh, so, you know, if we're going to do it, you know, glitz it up, whatever. Even in UK, they, um, they honor the death of the Queen. Yes, they did that. But I do think there's a difference between a ceremony to honor the death of a monarch in an ostensibly democratic country and uh, honoring the death of anonymous soldiers, uh, you know, and that's it. Because you know what I mean, right? Like, you guys know for a fact that, like, if you could get Donald Trump to redesign the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, it would be like the tomb of the great MAGA Americans who died making the world great, spread democracy, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like, there would be, like, if you could get, like a, like, a nationalist to go over the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, it would not be designed the way it is. It would be more jingoist and American exceptionalist. Um, yeah, every country has their variant of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Uh, yeah, the UK has the Unknown Warrior. I still think we have the coolest ceremony, though. Um, in my opinion. In defense of Britain, we have a similar thing during Remembrance Sunday where we remember our dead. The only reason I show that ceremony is because I wanted to indicate that my opposition is not to ceremonies in and of themselves, but rather the ways in which the ceremony took place with the Queen in terms of its, its form and its function, um, and its implications. I find the implications of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier to actually be quite positive. Um, it seems like one of the very few parts of our, like, military, industrial complex and culture that aren't cynical. You know what I mean? Like, 99.9% .9 of it is just irredeemable garbage. But, like, yeah, we have, like, a century-old tradition where guys pretend to be robots as they honor the anonymous dead. Sure. You really do that? You do that without any weird American exceptionalism or any military bravado outside the actual ritual? Oh yeah, we just we just walk 21 steps back and forth for eight hours, and then some guy shouts for people to be quiet, and then another guy comes and does the same thing. Okay. It's just a... It's just a... It's not cynical. It just seems like a very straightforward, very earnest ritual. <laughs> 